says we're streaming. Let's see here. I'm gonna look for the video. Okay. Yes, we are streaming. Hopefully. <laughs> Hello, everybody. All right, we are live. So I'm gonna give it a minute for the Facebook Live portion for anyone to hope or for people to hopefully be notified that I'm live and come on to Facebook and watch. You can still join the Zoom as well. Just use that link that I posted here in this Facebook group yesterday and emailed out two or three times already. <laughs> so um, Vivian was just telling me she just clicked that link this morning and it took her directly to this Zoom. So either way is fine. I see Brenda watching on Facebook, so that's good. Um, so I'm going to try to monitor the chat. It's also the anyone who doesn't have their camera on here on Zoom, you won't see them, but um, but you can use the chat to type in questions. By the way, my name's Jennifer Cotton. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Midlothian, Texas, and that means I get to um, get a discount on my stamping supplies. I get to, if I choose, which I do, teach people how to stamp and make greeting cards, scrapbook pages, gift packaging, and more with stamps, ink, paper, and lots of cool tools, which you see here in my background. This is a different camera than I normally use, and it's Zoom, so it has a filter. <laughs> Just FYI, I love Zoom because it has filters, but anyway, um, <laughs> uh, that's why it looks a different angle than normal. Usually, it's from straight on over here. Anyway, welcome everybody. Thank you guys for being here today. Please comment on Facebook. Make a comment that you're here. Say hi, whatever you want. I am going to give away a prize today, and it's not the cards I'm making. It's going to be an actual like product prize, but it will be based on what questions you ask me about being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So um, let me see. Okay, so we have a few people watching on Facebook. Remember, you can still join the Zoom, and I'm going to go ahead and get started. So thank you guys for joining me today. Like I said, my name is Jennifer Cotton. I have been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for 21 years in November, 21 years. <laughs> um, I joined, let me put these notes over here so I don't keep looking that way. I joined Stampin' Up! really knowing nothing about Stampin' Up. I just knew I liked to stamp and make cards, although I had no clue about the skill level that could be achieved in making cards. I had made it up on my own and I'm not naturally crafty or talented in that way. Therefore, I, good morning, Landa. I, um, uh, on my own before I saw a Stampin' Up! catalog had been folding a piece of white paper in half from the craft store, which I found out that quality was terrible. I didn't know. And stamping like a dragonfly. I remember this dragonfly stamp I had bought at the craft store and a greeting down in the bottom corner. That was, I thought, this is amazing. You can make your own cards. What the heck? <laughs> and then I contacted Stampin' Up! because I found them online um when researching I actually wanted to start my own stamp company to be honest even though looking back on it like I had no skills for that but I didn't know anyway so I found Stampin' Up! accidentally uh found them online contacted my local demonstrator and when I saw the catalog that she gave me I was like oh these are what cards are supposed to look like <laughs> it's a little more involved than a one piece of paper and two stamps on it and multiple colors etc um, so anyway, that's uh, the very short version of how I got started with Stampin' Up. You don't have to be, um, you don't have to be, what's the word I'm looking for? Starting a business. You don't have to, like I was, was trying to be, um, you don't have to be crafty. <laughs> you don't have to be anything. You don't have to be not shy. I was painfully shy when I joined Stampin' Up. Um, to, to join, to get the kit, because first of all, it's just a great deal. Hello, Janet, by the way. Thanks for joining us. Um, it's just a great deal. And right now it's an even better deal through October 31st. That's why I wanted to do this Facebook Live and Zoom. <laughs> oh, it's weird. I saw y'all waving on Facebook because it's delayed and I thought I needed to wave again. Um, anyway, 
$155 in merchandise of your choice for only $99 plus tax. It's a great deal. Anyone can take advantage of it. There's no, no obligation if you do that. You don't have to stay for 21 years and sell like me. <laughs> you don't have to place an order. You don't have to log into the website. Like you don't have to do any of that. Now, I would think you would want to get your discount because you get this great deal. Why not continue the great deal of getting the discount? But it is not required. So that's awesome. Um, I've had a team since early on because I did. So my thing was I wanted to make a few extra bucks. Literally, my daughter was eight months old. We, uh, I had just quit my full-time job and was not working on purpose. I intended to stay home. So we, our income was cut in half. And um, so I was like, well, I can make a little extra money and do like home parties, like, you know, other, I'm not going to name them, <laughs> other direct sales companies that I've heard of, because uh, I had never heard of Stampin' Up, but I can still stay at home. So anyway, I, um, the point is, so because of that, I knew I was going to tell people about this great deal, $99 for, or however much the kit was back then. Honestly, it was a different price. I don't remember. And so I started having people join my team right away and probably with, because I can't remember dates, I'm bad on that, probably for sure within the first year, but probably within the first six months, started having team meetings and I've been doing them ever since. Um, they started out, of course, all in person at my house years ago and we've evolved and we moved to new locations because we were too big and then, you know. The world went crazy and we did them only on Zoom and now we do both and it's awesome. So I've had a team since the since very early on, basically the beginning, since I actually, you know, I, I uh, had someone purchase the starter kit at my second or third party. So anyway, it was awesome. Um, and by the way, we also do swaps at our team meetings. I should have brought over the most recent ones, which I've already distributed into my displays, but I show those on my weekly Zooms. I'm sure I'm weekly Facebook Lives. I'm sure you guys know. So by the way, I do have door prizes, uh, a door prize today, and it's going to be product, but you have to ask me questions about this whole starter kit thing. So I'm going to see, hey, Sue has to watch replay on her way to the chiropractor. Totally get it. Um, so you guys can comment your questions in Facebook or here on Zoom in the chat. And I will write down when you ask a question and each question you ask gets you an extra entry into this prize. I'm not giving away the cards today. I'm actually using one of them in a swap. <laughs> so uh, not giving away the cards and I'm only making two. Um, but please ask me a question so that I can fill this video. But in the meantime, I want to, let me see. Yes, I said that already. Um, I want to tell you some ways that Stampin' Up! has affected me since I joined. So A, number one is stamp knowledge. Uh, if you missed that part at the beginning, when I started stamping, I had no, I mean, of course, this was 21 years ago, so you got Pinterest and all that now, but I had no basis to base it on so I was folding a piece of paper in half and stamping I'm literally sure I understand. sorry I never talked to my phone hold on let me make sure she's quiet I don't know why she thought I was talking to her um no stamping basis I would literally stamp a couple of images in one color on a one piece of white paper and that was it so of course my stamping skills have grown so much um I learned how to measure <laughs> I didn't I knew fractions back in high school but not at this time like I had forgotten what you know if you need a piece of paper that's one and a fourth where is this on the ruler again let me figure this out and then I advanced to eighths and now I can do sixteenths so I mean that's pretty impressive in my opinion so I got those I gained those skills um but of course the the style the designing actually well for my first many 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 years all I did was copy um wherever I could find inspiration that's where I my class projects came from so when we had a, a thing called like Stampin' Connection that demonstrators shared on back then, kind of like our Facebook now, we 
there was a website that we used, and then the catalog. Those were my main ways. And then even as Pinterest started coming on and all that, I was still copying. And there's nothing wrong with that. Any of us can copy. I still do copy things or get inspiration, but I am. I've developed the skills to be able to design. So anyway, I think that's pretty cool. Being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator made me be able to design stuff. And um, even if you never get to that level, it does not matter. Many of my team members copy to this day, and there's so much inspiration out there. That's what it's for to get inspired by and use. Um, we call it case, copy and share everything. That's what a stampin' up or sort of a, a, I guess a stamping term, case. Okay, so of course nowadays you have, there's a demonstrator Facebook group where people post amazing samples. They're so good on there. Um, we have Pinterest, we have websites, blogs, videos on YouTube. So inspiration is everywhere. So do not feel like you have to be crafty. Um, but I just love that part. B is actually my favorite part of being a demonstrator is the friendships. I've made so many friends being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I'm going to see if anyone has a question. Can you buy anything you want when you purchase the starter kit? Once being a demonstrator, when can you rejoin? Okay, and I'm going to make sure there's no more morning. Okay, yes, and good morning to everybody, by the way. I'm not skipping saying good morning to y'all this morning, um, but I want to be mindful of the time. I'm trying to keep this to about an hour. I think I might be okay. We'll see, because I am going to make two cards for y'all as well. Okay, so Marcia said, oh, Linda said, tell me about the kit. Okay, let me do Linda first. So the kit is completely customizable. That's the beauty of it. So if you are already a stamper, like most of you watching probably are, but even if you're not, I wasn't either basically when I joined. So yeah, Vivian was not. This is amazing, her story. I should have planned to have you tell your story. If you want to tell it, Vivian, you can. But um, yeah, you don't have to be already a stamper. But um, okay, the kit. So it's customizable. You get currently 155 in any merchandise you want. So if you're not a stamper like Vivian, I actually gave her suggestions on you know you have nothing <laughs> here's a good start <laughs> and then you can buy more when you get ready but this will give you stamps ink paper you know it's the basics if you're already an a stamper an avid stamper whatever where you already own some stuff that's the beauty you can pick what you want so if you need the die cut machine grab that if you have your die cut machine you have all your basics get some bundles you love if you're like, oh, I've always wanted that Stamparatus, that would be a great time to get it. So hopefully that makes sense, Linda. It's completely customizable. It's only $99, free shipping, tax only. And in the month of October, you pick 155 in any merchandise you want. Okay, so Linda gets an entry. Actually, I need to write your last name down, Linda. Linda Carver. <laughs> Hello, that could help. All right, next is Marsha. When can you, re when you quit, when can you rejoin? So if you are a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, or you used to be one, let's say, um, you can rejoin under your current upline the next day after you drop. And we are allowed to drop. There's, again, no obligation to this kit. So you have a time period where you'll still be active after you get the kit. You can take advantage of the perks if you want and not take advantage if you want. And then if you don't meet our requirements, you'll drop out. So Marsha saying, when can I rejoin? Under your current demonstrator immediately. If you want to join under someone else, it's 90 days. So three months. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Any questions on that, let me know. So that was Marsha. And then Dana said, can you buy anything you want when you purchase the starter kit? The only exception is Paper Pumpkin. And that's because I think because it's a subscription, that's a whole different website. You have to subscribe to it. Anything you see in the online store, you can add to your kit, including clearance rack merchandise, which just got updated today, by the way, FYI, if y'all are shopping, you can add that clearance rack stuff to your starter kit. Um, kits, like the kits collection, yes, bundles, dye machine, collections, suites, and then anytime Stampin' Up! is having a pre-order that demonstrators only can order, you can add that to your starter kit as well. 
So right now fitting florets, which I'm going to use these to stamp with today, is a free order. So only demonstrators can order it right now. So you can order it in your starter kit. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. The answer is yes, you can order anything you want with the exception of paper pumpkin, or if it's not available, obviously no, nobody can order anything that's temporarily not available. Um, so what's the catch to joining Janet? <laughs> um, if, if, since you're here, Janet, if you would like to elaborate on your question, I would love it. Like if you really think there is a catch, because there isn't one. <laughs> okay, I figured you were just prompting me, which is cool, of course. Um, there truly is no catch. Like as a demonstrator, so I do classes and events where in person. And back in the day, I did a lot of home parties. I tell everybody about this deal because to me, that's not good customer service if I'm not telling you you can buy this from me, of course, and you'll get a thank you card and you'll get my, you always get my customer service and you can ask me questions and blah, blah, blah. But FYI, the best deal is this $99 normally for 125 in merchandise with free shipping. So um, I'm telling everybody about it. I do think it's the best deal for your dollar. <laughs> and once you join, Stampin' Up! does not require you to ever even log in or place an order or et cetera, do anything else. Now I'm always encouraging you, hey, I would log in if I were you, you know, November, I think, uh, I forgot the date now, but they just told us. But anyway, like the second week in November, you can log in and see the new catalogs. Um, December 1st, you can order from the new catalogs with your discount. So I'm always encouraging you and letting you know what's available while you're active. But hopefully that makes sense. No catch. Um, if you do none of that, nothing bad happens. And I don't bug you to death. I have a demonstrator email list, which anyone can opt out of, of course. We have a Facebook group that you actually have to request to join, or I will invite you, but you can reject the request. <laughs> like, so, you know, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let me, yes, I did write you down, Janet. Um, Marsha, are you going to be on Thursday? I am not. Good question. I'm replacing Thursday's live this week only with this video because I uh, will be on a retreat. I'm very excited. So <laughs> that's why. Um, so no, Marsha. And then I saw a question on here on uh, um, Zoom, which I'll read in a second. Dana says the friendships are the best. Yes, that was my number two, which I haven't gotten to yet. I agree a thousand percent, which Dana is one of my friends now, only literally only because of Stampin' Up. I never would have met her. Um, is there a warning on the starter kit that says it may be addictive? Um, no, we would never warn you of that. <laughs> Just kidding, Dana. Um, Linda, you're welcome. Okay, so what do we say here? If someone joins at a party, does the host get any credit? Good question, Vivian. The host does not get credit. Um, what And what I usually do with that is just do the math. And if it would have given her 10 more dollars in free product, I'll give her 10 bucks in product myself, the host. Because it seems like a huge loss, but when you put it pen to paper and do the math, it usually is not a big deal. And your host is usually happy for that friend nine and a half times out of 10. Your host is like, cool for you. I don't want to buy it, but good that you're taking advantage of it. Jennifer's tried to sell it for me for to year, for years and I never bought it, but yay that you are. So it's no big deal. Like that's nothing to stress about. Um, now we always offer it to our host because if you do host a party, you get to spend your host dollars toward that starter kit if you want. So everybody keep that in mind as well. If you're the host, you can put your host dollars towards the starter kit cost. Um, good morning, Stella. I see you there uh, joining us on Zoom. We are the we are all first class enablers here. That's right, Janet. <laughs> um, okay, so I think <laughs> the catch is the more you buy, the more you want, is what Landa said. <laughs> that is possibly true, actually. Um, okay, so Janet, I mean Vivian, I need to put you down. Okay, so um, 
back to my list of why, like the, the way Stampin' Up! has benefited me. Number two on my list, but number one, like my favorite reason is the friendships. I've met hundreds and hundreds of people now as a result of Stampin' Up! Um, Stella's shaking her head. She's been on my team for several years now. And, you know, I wouldn't have met Stella if not for Stampin' Up! But then Stella has joined the team and we have a team of over 200, which she, I doubt you know all 200 of them, Stella, but you get exposed to so many more stampers when you're in a team through the Facebook group alone, even if you're long distance, um, much less when we gather at Stampin' Up! events or gather in person here local where I am in Texas. Um, so anyway, I've met people first off just as customers. When I started out, uh, I started doing parties and meeting people that way. And they, I mean, literally anyone who's watching this and you're one of them, you know, I met you 18 years ago at a home party and now we're friends. Um, so they start off with customers. Then I, people started joining my team and we almost get even closer when you join the team because, you know, we're doing even like I'm doing the customer stuff and you can still come to that. You're still allowed to participate, be a club member, all that. Then you also have these activities. Um, and then we go on trips together. That's optional. Everything's optional, but we, I mean, we've traveled to New York, um, uh, New Orleans. Now I'm going to blank on all the places. Florida, that's one of our favorite places to go when Stampin' Up! has a convention in Florida, in Orlando. Um, and that's, again, optional. Not everyone goes to these. Salt Lake City, of course. But we've done that. We have a big event in Arlington coming up. We have, I would say, close to 60 team members attending these events all over the U.S., but most, the bulk of them are going to Arlington because my team started out all local. Um, so it's, the friendships are amazing. And then you, so when you go like on a Stampin' Up! convention, you meet other people that aren't in your team. They have no relation to your team, none of that. They're just demonstrators and you find like-minded people in that. Um, so that's amazing. Um, so just friendships, friendships, friendships. It's so cool. When I joined Stampin' Up!, I had about two friends, legit, two friends. Now I, <laughs> and that's not a sad story. That's just how it was. Like, that's just how it was. Um, now I have hundreds and hundreds of friends and all over the world too, because yeah, you go to these conventions, you meet people that have flown in from other countries, from Canada and so on. So it's amazing. Um, okay, my next way of growth is personal. What is the most challenging part of running your business? That is a good question. I'm trying to see if, <laughs> I know Janet, right? She said, if I wasn't already a demo, I would buy the kit. I've definitely had people in our team commenting in Facebook, like, I, would, I wish I could buy this. <laughs> like, yeah, we always want that deal um, when they have one. So uh, Ollie, I know your real name. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to write it here says, what is the most challenging part of running your business? Um, so that's a question I haven't thought of. I mean, like I haven't put thought to. And my initial thing would be to say, I think it would be different for every person because maybe designing is not your strong suit. Designing actually does take me a while. Um, but it also depends on the level you run your business. Like I have my daughters in college now. <laughs> I have more time and I take all the time. So I'm working this hardcore full time, but you don't have to do that, obviously. And when she, when I joined, she was eight months old. So I was only working when she was asleep. Literally, that was it. I mean, obviously I went and did parties, but at home I would do stuff, design, cut paper, whatever, when she was asleep. So, um, and then it evolved. She started going to Mother's Day out. So then I had two days a week with six hours straight and then kindergarten, you know, so I've modified my schedule basically based on her throughout the years. Um, there's plenty of demos who work full time, who have five kids, zero kids and anything in between um, care for, you know, families, et cetera. So the point is we could all have different challenges but let me try to answer your question for myself. <laughs> um, I mean, for me, I would say time management is my biggest challenge, but 
and of course part of that is on yourself like get it together man <laughs> be strict on your hours work on this at a certain time make a schedule which I'm good at all that but um we can always improve so hopefully that helps Kylie um if anyone here there are some demos watching now um if you want to type in your biggest challenge feel free for to answer for Ollie but yeah it's a good question um I think time management is mine but that's because of the level I'm at what else could it be um just keeping on top of your you know putting in customer orders when they request them of you um maybe if you want to blog whenever you're going to blog <laughs> um uh put it on a schedule and do it you know if it's going to be twice a week five days a week once a week whatever so I don't think I answered that question super well but hopefully that was helpful hey Pat good morning <laughs> Stella says fear of missing out lol I want it all I know we want to participate in everything we want to do everything we're like oh this demonstrator is doing these kind of classes I should do that and this one does this really cute and I'm going to do that yeah it gets you have to like set your boundaries within yourself of what what you want and can do and what's on a maybe list for in the future yeah um okay so personal growth I have grown as a public speaker legitimately y'all I couldn't talk in front of two people when I joined Stampin' Up I was always the painfully shy in high school please don't call on me teacher I will you know melt in this chair when I took speech classes I would my voice literally would vibrate I would just start like uh, I don't know I can't recreate it but it would start vibrating and I could feel the heat coming up and I I know I was red from here down and then I would nervously touch my chest and that puts white marks on it <laughs> anyway <laughs> um so I couldn't even talk in front of two people my family members were legitimately legitimately these were things that were said to me when I joined Stampin Up because I said I'm going to try it I'm going to do some parties and they were like you're going to talk in front of people <laughs> I was like yes I'm going to talk in front of people and I did practice like to get over that fear and I just really honestly loved it so much I was like it's worth it I'm going to try it and my it's funny because some of my customers from way back then who I'm still friends with and they are customers or team members today they tell me you were nervous back then you think you weren't but like it showed but the point was I just did it so I've grown as a public speaker. I've now talked in front of Stampin' Up! events and do these videos every week. Like, it's crazy. No one would have ever thought Jennifer Cotton could do that back then. Um, I've obviously grown as a stamper. Like, you just naturally get those skills after you copy thousands of cards. <laughs> you get skills, <laughs> in my opinion, um, because you're basically recreating the same things you copied with different stamps and ink you know and designer paper it's literally that's all designing is in my opinion um a, and a traveler like I because of going on like my first convention right I didn't even know how to behave at an airport I didn't know about the security lines I didn't know how it worked like and so now I'm so like I can pack in five minutes and blah 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 like so choosing to go to these events has made me become a better traveler which might be like weird to y'all but everybody gets different things out of this and that's like I'm really proud of that I'm like I know how to travel now <laughs> because I didn't have a clue before and I don't know that I would have honestly I joined the first year I was like that's stupid who would go on a convention for a company <laughs> like because I didn't know anything about direct sales and so I didn't go to that convention but the next year I whatever I don't even know why I wanted to go and it was in Vegas so that was my first convention Las Vegas and um you know you're hooked once you go to one basically so then I went to every Stampin' Up event that they've ever had since then basically um so anyway not people don't have to do that but it's awesome it's awesome okay and my last one of course is this is my job I choose to work it as a job so that is a way that Stampin' Up! has affected me. Like it's become my career basically, um, which is not necessarily um, typical. In fact, it is not typical, I should say. 
most people either choose not to or whatever, you know, you have to put in the work. So, okay, Robin, my biggest challenge is juggling life and other jobs with trying very hard to make this a profitable business. Yes, because Robin is a very busy person and has a couple of jobs <laughs> um, and then does Stampin' Up! as well. So yes, so that's one of those ch challenges for her, juggling. Um, okay, so I don't see any other questions right now. I am going to point the camera down. Well, the camera's already pointing down. I'm going to, um, what is it called? Spotlight this screen for my stamping presentation. Please keep your questions coming. I also have a whole list here <laughs> of possible topics that you might ask about. So depending on time here at the end, I may just um, spill out some info, you know. But um, of course, I want everyone to know that's watching this video, you are invited to join my team, of course. And we just, or I just want you to know about this great deal. Okay, so I'm going to use this Fitting Florets product. I know I've shown it. I showed it on the on last week's Facebook Live, and I mentioned it on the week before because I didn't have it yet. So this is a brand new product that's coming out. What's important to know is the bundle fit, uh, framed florets bundle will be available in our new catalog that comes out in January. The other three products are going to be while supplies last starting uh, November 1st. I'm sorry, when customers can order them, November 1st. So of course, as a demo, that's another perk. You can get these before they go while supplies last. And then you get your discount and you get host benefits and all that stuff. Um, so the framed florets bundle, which is sold separately as well, but if you buy them together, you get the photopolymer stamp set framed florets, which is sort of an all occasion floral stamp set. And then you get um, <laughs> you get the dies. I see your question. Uh, who is that? Linda. Yes. Okay. Linda Carver. I'm going to give you a tick mark because you did two questions. Um, okay. And I'm going to answer that, but uh, you get the bundle. And I know I showed this before, but you get these three oval dies, some standalone dies, and then dies that cut out some of these stamped images. So that's the one that will be in the new catalog, which as a demo, if you do plan to, you know, give it a shot, let's have some friends over, do a class. It's nice to know when product will last beyond a, a couple of months. So you know these will last. And then Framed and Festive is this awesome holiday stamp set. It's all words, eight different greetings, red rubber. And um, you can make or you can add these to any of your holiday stamping cards, projects. And then the gold adhesive backed swirls. You get 75 of them because to me, this package looks kind of little, but then when you do the math, it's you get 75 um, and they're super cute. And I've actually, I'm going to use them on the projects today. So you'll see how they really look amazing. Hopefully you'll be able to tell. I've taken some pictures. I'll post in my VIP group as well. Um, anyway, they're amazing. And then of course the fitting Florets designer paper, which again is going to be while supplies last. So I'll flip through this while I look at that question again. What was your most favorite experience being a demonstrator? That is a very hard question. <laughs> I have so many favorite experiences. Um, as an actual experience, I mean, I would say these conventions. My first convention was amazing. My mind was blown. Um, it... it Sorry, I was clicking a button on my phone there. Um, they're fun. They're exciting. They're, you get prizes. You get to see new products. You get to see all of the corporate people. So those conventions, as far as, again, what was your most favorite experience? Um, but another experience, if you want to call it that, is literally within my team being able to help and see people grow 
in the same way as me, whether it's, um, you know, gaining customers, it's gaining confidence, gaining friendships. I love that. I love when I see my customers and team members making friends with each other that they, again, never would have met if not for being, in this case, in my team. I'm not saying I'm, I know there's plenty of Stampin' Up! teams out there. Um, so that's an experience that I love, just being able to bring people together and show them that they can craft, that anyone can craft. Okay, here's my third favorite experience. <laughs> when you show somebody that they can craft and they were sitting at that home party with their arms crossed and or that class that their friend brought them to or you came over to stamp with them and they're kind of, you know, reserved, not reserved, they're standoffish. They're like, this isn't for me. I'm not crafty. Well, let me just show you though. Just go ahead and stamp this here. Put that there. Glue this together. And then their eyes light up like it's so amazing. So hopefully that's helpful. Those were some, some experiences. Um, Ollie, how do you create with new product? What are the steps you take? So I can kind of tell you the exact steps on this first card. So I knew I needed... Uh, wanted to make my projects for this video with this new product here. So step one is I literally get it all out and lay it in front of me, only this product. And then I say to myself, is there anything else at this moment that I think might work with this? So in this case I did, I was like, ooh, I bet this gold shimmer one fourth inch ribbon would look great with this whole theme the gold here blah, blah blah so I pulled that out um looking at my table so then I flip the designer paper over because I almost always use designer paper but if not I just go in my head or it samples I've looked at on Pinterest and see what colors I think I'm going to use and I pull out all those ink pads now in this case I pulled I'm reading these again evergreen navy polished pink and soft succulent and I knew I could go back and get balmy blue and blushing bride and crushed curry if I wanted to but I kind of had it in my head that I was going to use one of these flowers and a greeting and a Christmas greeting that's why I pulled those colors first it's obviously I can go back and get any color I want oh and I pulled memento black because of the coloring that's step one let me read this question again. I'm giving you another tick mark, by the way, Ollie. Okay, so those are my first steps. Then it's kind of, um, I don't have an exact process, um, which some people do and some don't, but, and I'll usually open up the dies, by the way, like this, and I'll grab any other dies, like if I think I might, like these don't need it, but, um, oh, I might use those shape dies, those labels for this. I'll pull those out or something. Anyway, um, my next step would be, what am I trying to, oh, sometimes I just start stamping, <laughs> literally. So what I did yesterday, and I had looked around at some inspiration over on that world card making day, they made cards with these products. And so I Went to that video yesterday, I fast forwarded and I literally just looked at the projects they made real quick because there's not pictures, you have to look at the video. Um, and so I die cut this piece, this oval here out of white and I was like, I'm gonna stamp something on that. So that's literally the process that I did there. Oh, but that's not the first card I'm, make. I'm gonna make. I guess I'll make it first. Um, that's fine. Anyway, so here's a scrap paper that I have for this video today. So I die cut that out. Um, I think eliminating everything you own in the room is a big part of my process. <laughs> Let's just focus on these products here. And if I think, oh, so-and-so would be cute on this card, then I'll grab that and put it onto or this project. Okay, so this is a stamp and cut emboss machine. Of course, y'all know 125, get it right now. You still get 30 more dollars in additional merchandise in your starter kit. It die cuts and embosses everything Stampin' Up! sells without any additional purchases, and it cuts amazingly. So let me cut this uh, oval out, and so that's what I did. I cut this out, which this is what the die does. It gives you the inside oval and the 
outline oval the frame. And then I was like, well, let me stamp a greeting on it. <laughs> so I did that. Oops. So hopefully this is making sense, Tali. So I just start stamping the, I just start stamping random images. And then I also went in and I picked which flower I thought I would use for this card, which I picked this one here. So it's the smaller grouping with the two larger flowers on it. And I picked this greeting, wishes for a beautiful birthday, because it's so pretty. Oh, and I wasn't making the card for a specific theme, so it was fine. Um, so I stamped flowers in memento black. And I know there's more questions on here. I'm going to look in a second. When you get all the beautiful catalogs in your kit, how do you give them out? Great question. So first of all, that's Vivian. If you, because you get a pack of eight catalogs free, there's no charge for those in your kit. Um, first of all, I would write my name and phone number on the back, my email. <laughs> and then second of all, give them to friends. Hey, Mary, guess what I'm doing now? I can teach you how to make some gorgeous, um, easy, you know, fill in the word that fits your style. Some simple, some easy, some quick, some gorgeous, some amazing projects, cards, scrapbook pages. Um, here's the catalog. You know, do you want to set up a time? I can come over to your house and bring some stuff. You can come over to my house, blah, blah, blah. Boom. Give them out. You can, um, if you have friends that already stamp, of course, like, hey, Mary, I joined Stampin' Up. Here's a catalog. Or you can put together a little party and give them out that way. If you don't want to do any of that, you can always give them to another demonstrator who would use them. Or you can start handing them out at, you know, leave them at schools, like in the break room, the teacher's lounge, dentist office, doctor office, anywhere that will let you leave catalogs out, leave catalogs with your contact info on them. So hopefully that helps that one. Um, how do you create? Joni, good morning. What do you, what are you most proud about with your Stampin' Up! career? Um, <laughs> I'm laughing because Linda said she had to go. Um, first of all, who asked that? What are you most proud about, Janet? So I think I'm most proud. I mean, I don't really know. I am proud of my personal accomplishments, but I'm proud that I actually was able to sort of do it, you know, like overcome all of my personal obstacles and fears, et cetera. Um, I do have some Stampin' Up! accomplishments I'm proud of, like awards that they give out. Um, so I'm proud of that. I'm not going to go too detailed into those right now, simply because they're not typical of the normal demonstrator. So you're not supposed to talk about those too much <laughs> in public due to rules. Um, but I am proud of, you know, meeting some goals that I've set. But yeah, I'm really proud of bringing friends together, bringing, bringing people together. I mean, I think it's just amazing. And of course, I brought myself together with them, <laughs> brought me together and then them together. Um, Peggy, meeting new creative people. Yes. Hey, Marsha. Good morning. Good, Ollie. I'm glad it helped. Okay. So kind of, I'm going to finish making this card is kind of how I designed this card. So I literally, like, there weren't a lot of changes on this one. Like sometimes I throw 10 things away before I get to the final. So I just stamped the greeting in polished pink. By the way, I did pick which paper next. So I went through this designer paper and I was like, oh yes, this is my favorite sheet from this pack. I'm going to use that one on this card. I'm going to use pink and I'm going to make it because I think this would make a great Christmas card because even though it's balmy blue, night of navy and polished pink and they, um, even though it's those colors, I think it would make a great Christmas card. 
So I'm going to not make a Christmas card with it so that I'm challenging myself. And, uh, but as a Christmas card, as a side note, I think it kind of looks like mistletoe. But anyway, so I had pulled out that paper. That's why I picked the polished paint. So I just made the oval landscape and I stamped the greeting over to the right and I figured the flowers could go on the left, which by the way, you can die cut out some of these flowers, only some with your dies to use in that place as well, or hand cut out the ones that don't have a die. And it says wishes for a beautiful birthday. Don't forget it's photopolymer. So if you don't have a nice hard table like me, grab your silicone, I mean, your um, Stampin' Pierce mat to put under that to get a good stamped image. This guy right here. Okay, so I'm gonna color in these flowers. So I just pulled matching colors, polished pink, soft succulent, and we don't have crushed curry yellow in blends. So I grabbed Daffodil Delight. Um, so I will take my dark daffodil. These are Stampin' Blends. They're alcohol-based markers. So I'm coloring with, I'm sorry, I stamped in water-based ink, Memento Black water-based, so that I can color in alcohol-based. You want the opposite. If you get a, if you're going to watercolor, you want to use a water, you want to use not a water-based ink, a, a permanent ink like stays on. And then color with water, if that makes sense. So do the opposite. I'm just adding some dark, soft succulent and some of these lines on the leaves there. And then I'm gonna go back with my light, soft succulent and fill it in. You can get way more fancy than me with these Stampin' Blends. I'm not, again, not crafty and I'm definitely not super skilled with coloring or painting or any of that. So I just do the basics. That's the thing too, everybody's different. So you may be 1000 times better at coloring than me. Awesome, that can be one of your traits and perks if you decide to do anything with your kit, <laughs> you know, business-wise. Um, that's not where I shine, <laughs> but <laughs> okay. I like, to give people all the little detail tips, like, um, which of course I won't be able to think of one right now, but just those things that we all do every time we stamp, but maybe they don't get pointed out, you know, but I'm trying to think, like the foam mat tip, just little things that make everything better. Okay, so on this polished pink on the flowers, I added the dark. I'm gonna go over it with the light. Went out of the line there a little bit. By the way, if you just came on this video, I am giving away a prize today. It will be product, Stampin' Up! product for every question you ask me about being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And, and no questions are off limits. I may have to be vague or whatever if needed, or I may have to go back and look up the answer for you, which I shouldn't have to, but you never know. Um, but no questions are off limits. So please feel free to ask. It is what time? 1047. Yeah. So I'm going to try to speed myself up a little bit here. I do have one more card to make. No coloring on that one. Um, but anyway, I'm not giving away these cards today just because we're doing it different and I'll, I will give away a product prize. So I'm not looking at the screen right now, but if you do have questions, let me know. And then after I color this in, I'm going to die cut it out. As a side note on Kylie, uh, I'm sorry, all these question about designing. I also sometimes when the designer paper has images that can be die cut out, I will die cut out a bunch of them. And then um, just lay them out in front of me to use on a project if I want. So I did that when I designed for my retreat in a box that we're, that Landa's cutting right now as we speak, or bagging probably. I think she's done cutting. And uh, I, I cut out all the candy canes. 
and then um, I ended up using almost all of them. But anyway, okay, so I'm gonna align this. This die or this image does have, what am I trying to say? The die and the image has these little holes in the die that you can use for alignment. They're more for alignment than to poke the paper out because the paper comes out. It's just one big piece. But I don't know if you can see them on the video, but there's tiny little holes and you sort of align the little tips of the leaves in those holes. But if I'm off, where's my camera? If I'm off, if I'm on a video. I'm going to blame it on that anyway. But sometimes the little holes in your dies are to poke the paper out and other times they are just so you can see where to align and that's what these are for alignment see they're not needed to punch it out okay so there's my flowers i left the die on the machine i would have been searching everywhere for that okay so this card finish it up so I I decided like I laid these pieces out and I kind of messed with their alignment a little bit but I decided to put them down here in the bottom right hand corner it'll be landscape and so then the next thing I did was decide to do a night of navy card base a lot of times I do white but I decided night of navy and then I wanted to add the polished pink behind the designer paper so that's how I came out with it. And then, of course, the gold ribbons. So my card base is five and a half by eight and a half. It's just an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock cut in half. And then I fold it in half with the bone folder. The designer paper is four inches by five and a fourth. And it is, um, I'm sorry, it's four by five and fourth. So then I cut the polished pink a tiny bit bigger, four and one eighth by five and three eighths, skinny little border there. And then I will attach that to my card base, which again, skinny little border because of the measurements I used. So it's as the 16th inch borders instead of eighth inch borders. Then I'm going to grab my silicone craft sheet so I don't get adhesive all over the table or my scratch paper, whichever I'm using. I want to attach the frame flat, the outside frame, which again, let me show this close up. It makes these little like almost cut marks all the way around. It looks really cool. So I'm gonna attach the frame first flat, and then I will use Stampin' Dimensionals for my greeting and flower. You can use any kind you want. I'm gonna use the minis. This suite of products is so pretty. Just FYI. And I'm always kind of challenged when I put these kind of dies together, always. Unless it's flat, of course. But I'm just going to do my best to align this. I always have my borders are a little off. I think it's the oval just throws me off, but it's fine. And then I'll add some dimensionals on my flowers. And I'm going to look up here at the comments and see if anyone said anything. Um. Okay, Cheryl, let me write your name down, Cheryl. Cheryl M, is it important to have your demonstrator close to your area? That is a good question. So it, uh, I don't think so nowadays, first of all, simply because so many people are, are online and doing things virtually. But I will say it depends on your personal needs. If you are a person who wants to be able to attend in-person events constantly that are led by your demonstrator, then you would want to consider that. Um, in my team, we offer quarter, uh, sorry, every quarter, we have two Zoom meetings and then one that is in-person and streamed on Facebook. So we offer things to our long distance. Um, we have court, 
I don't know why quarterly stuck in my head. We don't have much quarterly stuff. <laughs> Everything's weekly or monthly. We have weekly business builders that's always on Zoom. Um, everything's offered to be mailed out. You know, if you do purchase those super inexpensive monthly make and take packets, they're offered to be mailed out. So hopefully that answers your question. It depends on what's important to you. Most people nowadays, I think, are totally fine being long distance as long as they're upline, which is what you're called when you're the person someone joins under, as long as your upline is supporting you virtually and long distance. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, do, do you, sorry, I can't focus. Pat, do you... Let me read the first one. What are your next goals for your team and personal career? Do you still have challenges even though you've had success as a manager? Um, so Pat, I'm gonna, I don't really wanna talk about my personal goals right now because this is about you guys. And if you um, are interested in joining, uh, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, but my goals are always better and better. <laughs> Bettering my best. Do we, I still have challenges? Uh, yes, I think we all always still have challenges. Um, so I'm gonna tie a bow wrong while I say this. Even though I've had success, yes, literally everybody has challenges. There's, first of all, you always wanna be meeting new people. You always, if you're doing a business, you always want to be um, keeping up with trends, blah, blah, blah. So yes, definitely still always having challenges. I don't think anyone couldn't because everything in the world is always changing. <laughs> Even stamping, you know, creative challenges like, oh, there's a new product. How do I use it? How do I incorporate this? Um, what's this new style? You know, et cetera. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, Ollie, you, if you really don't do social media, how do you find others to craft that would enjoy taking your classes? Great question. That is... Uh, hopefully you're okay, I'm going to add my bow, with doing in-person because that's, uh, in-person is a perfect model. There's so many ways to meet people and I actually train on that within the team, but um, so I won't obviously go into a full whole thing here, but you can have people over, you can go stamp with people and have them bring their friends, you can do craft fairs, like so Yes, the opportunity, and actually it's even so fast and easy to meet people in person because um, you build that relationship right away. You meet them, they like you, you have a good conversation, they trust you now. So um, hopefully that answers that. But within my team, there is lots of opportunity to learn more, ask, of course, get training, get questions answered. And then I have free pre-made training, <laughs> things that are already out there for the team. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, okay, I marked you down. What kind of training and support are available who want to pursue this as a career? So Janet, within my team, thank you, Pat, no problem. <laughs> um, within my team, uh, we do weekly business builders Zooms. And so that's, first of all, just if you're straight up doing training, I mean, business, uh, we have our monthly gatherings, which always have some business stuff tips in there as well. I'm going to add a couple of these gorgeous, gorgeous gold. That's not going to focus. Um, what do we call them? Gold adhesive back swirls to this card. And that's the finished final card. Okay. So what was I saying? kind of training so we have that I have tons within our Facebook group especially who asked this Janet mark you down within our Facebook group I have uh files 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 how to do this how to do that I share my team uh, my team I share my monthly class tutorials um so it goes on and on of what I offer. 
And then Stampin' Up! has offerings as well. I'm going to get started on this next card. It is Evening Evergreen card base. I'm going to fold that in half. Stampin' Up! offers trainings as and what's the word? Um, resources for us as well. So hopefully that answered that. But if you have a more detailed question, let me know. Janet. Um, Pat, you left out the word creative. Let me see. <laughs> so did you leave it out of which question, Pat? <laughs> Thanks, Marcia. Thanks, Janet. Okay, so I think I answered all the questions right now. If I did not answer something correctly or fully, please comment on either platform. So for this next card, I knew I wanted to make a Christmas card. I love this evergreen and white gingham sheet of designer paper. So I cut my four by five and a fourth, which side note as a tip, I always cut designer paper nine times out of 10, four by five and a fourth at the biggest because you can get six out of a sheet that way. If you cut it the four and one eighth, you've eliminated it where now you can only get, I think, four out of a sheet just because of that one eighth of an inch. So that's why I border it with the four and one eighth by five and three eighths. So that's what this is, four by five and a fourth designer paper, and then a piece of basic white, four and one eighth by five and three eighths. And that goes on this evening evergreen card base. So pretty. And then I die cut this oval die that comes in the the fitting, I'm sorry, framed florets dies. So it's this one here. When you die cut this out, it's a nice large oval and it cuts two things at once, just like the other one, but the outline is way more fancy. So it's just really fancy and detailed and uh, pretty. And I did a gold foil and a white, and I want the gold foil outline and the white oval. So I'm going to save these for hopefully something else. Maybe not together, together, gather. But um, this small oval that I cut on the first card fits inside this oval. So you can layer those. And of course, I think this will be great on a black and white card, this white oval, um, this white detail frame. So anyway, those are for me to save. And then I will stamp on this white oval. This is going to be a portrait card up and down. So I'm going to use any of these greetings would work, but I used from the framed and festive, the Christmas set. May this season be filled with peace and joy. And I'm going to stamp it in evening evergreen. Y'all had the questions. <laughs> Janet loves that Stampin' Up! named the sets and the dies the same. So that's going to be in our next mini catalog. They, the bundles will have the same name. So framed florets, stamp set, framed florets, dies. So, and as my team pointed out to me, that means when you have this stuff at home, you will know immediately which dies go with framed florets because they're called the same thing. Um, I hadn't thought of that perk of it, honestly. So I'm tap, tap, tapping, not pressing too hard. Just going to put may this may this season be filled with peace and joy in evening evergreen ink at the top of the oval. This is a pretty simple card, actually. Just the die cutting is detailed. So, you know, that's a detail. <laughs> it's not just like a uh, you can't just die cut it and immediately die cut another one. You do need to clean your die out, make sure it's fully empty of the uh, what do you call it? of all the little pieces of cardstock. Okay, so before I am gonna put a, a really cool bow on here, but before I do that, I'm gonna assemble the rest of this. I'm gonna answer the questions and do I still have creative challenges? Yes, Pat. <laughs> um, most definitely, and sometimes worse than others. Like, where did I put a piece of on here? who knows what the reason is for that but sometimes I'm like I will have told you guys what I'm doing for a class I'm using these products and then when I get them all out like I showed Ollie earlier and then I'm like I've made a huge mistake what am I even going to do with this <laughs> like literally what am I going to do with this and so uh 
that's when I get on Pinterest and I get lots of inspiration. I'm going to, oh yes, hey, by the way, Marcia, thank you for sh sharing this video. Please feel free to share this on Facebook. I will still give you that extra entry. And this month, this week, not month, I'm giving away product instead of um, the cards. So I will enter you for every question you've asked and for sharing the video. I'm glad you did that, Mar Marcia. Thank you. Um, because, of course, we want everybody to hear how awesome all this stuff is. So I'm going to use the silicone craft sheet and add this gold frame. As you can see, I'm putting very little adhesive. I do not want it to go through the holes and be shown on the front. And it's a skinny, skinny little frame. I don't really think it's going to fall off my card. Stamp and Seal was a super strong adhesive. And so I'm just putting little bit, bits of it on those four top and sides pieces and then just a little bit in the center of each other's portion and then this will just go right in the center of the whole card front on the designer paper if I don't press hard I can still adjust it some before it's permanent there and then my greeting oval will be on dimensionals let me see here did I answer all the questions? Hanging chats. <laughs> yes, exactly. I was thinking, what did I say? But yes, those hanging chats. Yes, get them all out. You don't do not want those. They're bad. <laughs> okay, so again, I'm not for some reason I'm not good at centering those ovals, but that was not too bad. So there's that. To finish this card off, I will add a couple of the gems and then I'm going to make this bow and I hope I can do this on television. <laughs> but I have this Simply Elegant trim, which comes with silver and gold. My silver is not in here in this pack. I have some, but we just used a bunch of silver and gold in my team meeting. So I had partial packs, full packs, etc. Anyway. I'm going to use that and this gorgeous evening evergreen open weave ribbon, and I'm going to make a one bow with them. So I'm going to make a bunny ear bow. My phone, I mean, my computer just did a Facebook notification. Why is it doing that now? So it's a little bit more of a challenging bunny ear bow because of the two strings and one of the two ribbons, and one of them is basically a string. But you can do it. Whew. Yeah. This is the card I'm going to use in my card swap that I'm making for a retreat. So I've got to make a few more of these bows. Let me pull it real tight. Yeah, not too bad. I always do my... These are the kind of tips I was talking about. I love sharing these kind of tips. So I always do my ribbon from the roll when possible, because then there's zero waste on that one side. That's the kind of tip I was talking about. That's just my thing. I like to share that kind of stuff because I find it very useful to me. And when someone shares a tip like that, that I haven't heard, I'm like, oh, amazing. So, okay, I'm going to glue dot this on. Any last time questions, last time, last minute, I would love to have you on my team. If you're not on a team and you're not in my team, obviously, um, let me add these swirls, these gold swirls on either side here on the white part. They're so pretty in person. Y'all have to see these in person. They're so much shinier when you open up your packet and take them out. They're really shiny. So there's that card. That bow came out good, actually. <laughs> it's better than my first one. Um, let me put these cards back up here. And I'm going to hopefully always get like myself is like a hot mess when I am stamping. Like the look, everything gets messed up. But I'm bringing my face back on to say goodbye to you guys. Uh, Marsha, I'm glad you love the cards other Marsha. We have two Marshas spelled a different way in a row. Um, thank you as well. Janet's using the evergreen ribbon on your Christmas cards this year. Love it, Janet. Um, 
I love that ribbon. We used it in my Stampa stack this month as well. It's, it is a great Christmas ribbon, even though it's just sitting there in the annual catalog. Um, hey, Charlotte. Hey, Beverly. All right, I'm going to say hi to some of y'all real quick. By the way, I saw, oh, somebody came on the Zoom and now they're gone. I forgot who it was. I was going to say hi. Um, so I said hi to everyone over there. Um, BJ. Molly, I guess I've already said hi to you guys if I've answered your questions. <laughs> Wanda. Okay, let me go back down. All right, Pat, I'm glad you love the cards. Thank you, Janet. Um, okay, so like to look at the camera, I have to look here. I can only see those comments over there. Um, thank you guys very much for tuning in today. I hope it was fun and informative, even if you're not interested in the whole demonstrator thing. Um, hopefully you got some kind of little tips out of it. If y'all have any questions, let me know. I will post a link. I need to make a note to do that. Um, that you can go get the kit if you want to. I will post that in this video description over on Facebook. Yeah, I guess I couldn't have done that yet because I just went live from Zoom. Uh, but anyway, I'll update that video description and put that link in there in case you want to just grab the kit. But also you may have questions like Vivian did when she joined. She was like, what do I get? And so mine are always just suggestions. A lot of times when I make suggestions, people are like, I'll go with my own. <laughs> you know, obviously we don't have the same taste in that case, which is fine. Or things I don't know, you know, about their collection or whatever. But it's funny. <laughs> Many times I'm like, I would get this bundle. And they're like, me get this bundle instead but i can still help you answer your questions and then we'd love to have you on the team get get some of those perks no obligation any other questions get with me you can still post them in the group in the in the video as well and i can hopefully facebook will notify me a question has been posted and i can go back and type in my answer there for you um all right well everyone have a great day Yes. Thanks for you guys who are here on Zoom in person. We I appreciate you. I will be back. I should be back next Thursday. I don't know of a reason at this time that I won't be back at my normal day and time with a regular stamping video. Um, and in the meantime, if y'all need anything, just let me know. All right. I'm going to say goodbye now. Thank you. Bye.